Welcome to Louisiana Heartbeats. I'm Sudi Landry, and today I have with me Dr. Phil D. Myers. He's come in today to share not just one book, but many books that he has just recently put in ebook form, and they are available, and they have so many different topics, so many different twists. I mean, we have like, I think I counted 12 for sure, but we're gonna talk mainly about the beginning. And welcome to the show. Thank you, Sudi. Dr. Phil, I have Dr. Phil on my show. Yes, Don't you uh, love it when someone so says sweet. that? Thank you so much for having me, Sudi. Actually, I'm very, very grateful. I look forward to working with you because, uh, Katie Anna, I'm used to having authors on my show, and they're all fantastic, but I have never had one that decided that they were going to share their books with me, not just one, but 12, and I want to say 13 coming up, I believe. And so I'm looking forward to being able to use the big mouth and put the word out there about these Grateful Tummy books. Now, Phil D. Myers is a retired periodontist. He has had many, many jobs that led up to his career that you're recently retired from. And Phil has a lot of interest. And now I understand, after reading his bio, why you can crank these books out with so many different topics and ideas, and you have a special twist of a personality. He didn't talk hardly at all. I had to almost force him to talk, but when he decided to talk, you had a lot to say, Dr. Phil. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for coming on the show, and we want to get with it, because 26 minutes really passes really fast. Okay. And uh, due to the Writing School of Acadiana, where we meet once a month, the last Tuesday, of every month at Barnes & Noble here in Lafayette. Uh, uh, Phil is just one of the many people who's come out there. And uh, so now because of his being active with us, then uh, doors opening up for Phil to go and share with other people his journey of taking his books and putting them in ebook, which seems to be the biggest thing going right now. People are just so, and also because of the fact that, that the uh, ebooks you know, I like a hard copy, but I'm going to go for whatever's out there. And uh, so I know an author, if you, you know, want to go and just read that book real fast, then the ebook's the way to go, you know. So, Phil, with that being said, let's just get right into it and talk about uh, telling people who you are. Okay. Okay. From what I understand, uh, you are originally from where? Lafayette. Lafayette, born. Born and raised in Lafayette. And you attended several colleges, too, to get all the training that you got, didn't you? Uh, yes, I did. And where was that? Colleges. I went to uh, LSU, then I went to uh, USL, and then I went to uh, the dental Loyola, specialist? Loyola Dental School, and then I went to uh, the University of Nebraska. Which happened to be what? It was, uh, uh, that was where it led you to being part of the missionary? Yeah, well, during my... Yeah, that did. I, when I became, I was, I became a periodontist, which is a dental specialty, and, right. and uh, I uh, practiced and in, in initially practiced in Shreveport, and uh, I practiced general dentistry for five years. That's what I was going to say. Here in Lafayette before I before I went and got my specialty degree. But anyway, the uh, Shreveport just happens to be in the middle of the Bible Belt. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so. I love Shreveport. I met a lot of wonderful people, and, and for over 20 years, I went on uh, <clears throat> mission. We went and did missionary work in medical teams in, in uh, southern Mexico with the uh, uh, what is it? Mexican Indian Training Mission out of Shreveport. Okay, was, the reason I brought that up also, too, is the fact that Acadiana, I mean, he's been down many, many paths, but he ended up in Lafayette, and we're grateful. I'm originally from Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh, are you? Yay! Well, good, so, good so I know that uh, there's a lot of people I'm amazed lately I'm meeting that is from Shreveport, Louisiana, and it's a totally different world here, isn't it? Yeah, but it's well, it's wonderful. Both, I both know both, both worlds are, are good. I love both places. But it's amazing how culture can be so different from just a few hours away. Absolutely. And I love it. I fell in love with Katiana. Okay, so you grew up in uh, Louis Lafayette, but also too, we mentioned. Uh, that, I mean, I talked to you prior a little bit about you. You have so many interests. I mean, my goodness, according to this, of course I know, you have passion for writing. You enjoy fishing, cooking, good music, 
and spending quality time with your family and friends. Absolutely. Now, when you were a young boy, and I had mentioned to you that I kind of wanted to glance through that, he, his hard worker, you've been a very hard worker ever since you were young, and anything that you did, you did it very well. I mean, uh, and then you gradually come from, what is it, your first job, you call yourself the garbage boy. Yep. Then you had a second job, you called yourself the lawnmower boy. Yep. And then you called yourself the club, club scout. You helped a few old ladies cross the street. Then and you were shoe shine boy. Yep. And your father was in the restaurant business, and so he had a, mag a magazine shop. So there, you loved it, you said, being out there, and you Absolutely. were good at it. Absolutely. And you Absolutely. said you were good at it. And you said <coughs> that you also used to be a peanut salesman boy. Yeah. Okay, and then of course you know you never really got to watch the games because you didn't really like that. But when the weather got colder, you had made a, this is where some of your personalities coming out, that you promoted selling the hot chocolate and you loved being a hot chocolate sales boy, salesman boy. Then you got fired for spilling it on some very unfriendly or annoyed or somebody said, what was it? Uh, very unfriendly home team fans. Yep. Okay, suddenly you were unemployed. You were an unemployed hot chocolate salesman boy with a small chance of ever getting your job back. Sure. Now, right there, Phil, is where I see your personality coming out that ended up in some of these books. And so anyway, you learned to mop floors and you never complained. That's the whole point. I'm making a Katie and he's had many, many jobs. Then he's gone to college, and then he's baked bread. He's going to the special school to learn how to make the bread. And then you, of course, you worked with some wonderful people in this area in the dental profession. You just pretty well been all over the place. And now you're retired, correct? Right. And you are now focusing on your books. Right, now I'm an author. Okay. Now <clears throat> you are a full-time author. Which I dearly love. And you love. I love it. And that's yeah. good because it's a season where you've got the time and sure. you are able to do this. But, sir, with all the books, people, that scattered across in front of me, you didn't just start writing today. No, I started writing a long time ago. And in between all your jobs that you had in your profession, before you retired, you cranked out these books. Right. Which was the last book? That, no. What was the first book that you published? The first book, this is the first book I published. It's a Give Us This Day Our Daily Bread. You, uh, you want me to tell you? Sure, want to tell a little story about sure. that. Sure, that, that book, uh, I had was practicing dentistry and I decided to take a little hiatus and, and uh, go to uh, Clark College in Vancouver, Washington. I wanted to open a restaurant. So went to, to baking school under a wonderful, wonderful baker. I mean, I mean he was unbelievable and, and just... It was, that was one of the funniest experiences I've ever had in my life. Stayed up there and, and uh, <clears throat> met a lot of people and I just, I loved it. And, and then I had a lot in Shreveport. I was going to open a restaurant. And when I got out of the baking school, I came about this close to opening the restaurant, but I couldn't, I couldn't get enough money to do it right. So I didn't do it and I was, uh, <clears throat> I was disappointed, but I mean, not overwhelmed. But anyway, I... At night, when I go to bed at night, I get on my knees and and uh, and thank God for, for for the day, you know. And I always ask God to be in His will. That's right. And when I, uh, I but I, you know, I said to myself, Why did I go to baking school? I mean, you know, what? <laughs> why did I go to baking school anyway? I went to sleep. In the middle of the night, I had a dream about a baking book, which which this is right here. I, and I dreamed. I had a loose leaf tab, I mean a, a tablet of where you, you know, I opened it up and I had the, the, the title of the book, Give Us This Day Our Daily Bread, and I pictured the, the cover of the book and then I, uh, I on each, opened up each page and, and I laid out the book perfectly and I've never written a book in my <laughs> life. When I went to, uh, I'll back up for a second, when I was, when I was young, I had two big brothers, two sisters and two big brothers, and my big brothers told me that if I liked English, I was a sissy. Huh. Oh yeah, I'll never forget it. So anyway, it's like putting nails in the, in, the, mm -hmm. in the, the English department for me. So anyway, so I, 
this, I don't know how I ever wrote it because I have a very poor back, I don't know how I went to 10 years of college, I have a very <laughs> poor art background in English, you know, yeah. and I also, I, uh, my spelling's not good and my handwriting is horrible, but I guess that fits in with being a doctor. Yes, but, but it that, does. But that, that part worked out, but anyway, so, so anyway, so I laid out the book, wrote the book, and, and got some kids together. It's about kids baking bread. That's why I went to baking school. So anyway, that was, that's the reason right there. And this is to, it's based on, the book's based on scripture. Right. And, and the, one of the things that I wanted to do from the missionary work was I wanted to, I wanted to reach out right now, and I'll say this, okay, and, and right now in Catholics and and uh, non-Catholics, for some reason, don't like each other, okay? They, it's pitiful. It's p absolutely Doctrine pitiful. Doctrine gets in the way. Yeah, we're all Christians. But right. anyway, but I guess that doesn't matter. Anyway, it's, that's not politically correct. So anyway, <laughs> so what I did was I wanted to reach out to, in which I did, Spanish, black, and, and Caucasians, white. So, so that's what I have throughout my book. And, I, and so the kids I have... Span a couple of Spanish kids, a couple yeah. of black kids, and some a couple of white kids baking bread, and it, that that anyway that was my beginning of right of writing. Okay, and since we have so many other things to cover, I want to make a comment. It's a step by step guide to baking bread, but also, Katie Anna, this is an author of children books. That's something we need to also share, as you can see with the illustration at the top. And so this one is using scripture, as he said that's in the Bible and is talking about, give us this day our daily bread. And so children get the comfort of actually doing and baking and getting the meaning behind each thing. Okay, now, so that was the first book that you did. Let's talk about the one that seems to be really jumping out and people are using it. And it's called, what is it? Hooray, today is your lucky day. How to successfully create your very own Dream book by Dr. Phil D. Myers. So, what was the reason for okay, writing this I'll, book? I'll tell you exactly the reason. I uh, loved coffee when when my uh, when my mother was when I was a young kid. My mother would tell me when she was cooking, which and she was an excellent cook, of course. But anyway, when she was cooking, she uh, she always told me she said, "You have to have coffee when you're cooking because coffee gives you courage." Wow. That's exactly what she said. So I have to have coffee when I'm writing because coffee gives me courage to write. So anyway. I like that. I like that. So this book here is, it's, it, this is a great, this is a great little book because what I do, I do my best writing, believe it or not, at Starbucks and CC's both. But okay. anyway, but I do my best writing there when I, because there's coffee. Inevitably when I'm, when I'm writing, I'll be sitting there on my computer. Now I'm horrible on my computer anyway. I have a hard time typing. We anyway. learn it. We learn it. Anyway, I, I write and type and do whatever I've got to do. And, and people always come up to me because I am a very friendly person, okay? <laughs> so they come up to me and they ask me, what, you know, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm, I'm writing books. I said, uh, I'm an author. I love the author part because, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that too, okay, before I back up for a second. On my, all of my books, I have Dr. Phil D. Myers. Okay, Dr. Phil D. Myers. When I was actually practicing, I didn't like for people to call me a doctor. I, I wanted just to be, <laughs> call me Phil. So anyway, but all of my friends have told me that you got to use the doctor part because it, it makes you, it makes you look like you're important, which of course they all know that I'm not. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, so I started using the doctor parts on my book to impress people, and I hope that y'all are impressed, okay? <laughs> but anyway, so with this book here, I'm, I'm, when I'm writing, people come up to me and ask me, and they always ask me this, well, I've always wanted to write a book. Now, now this is the lady right here, that's, that's the president of our, of our writing club, so she hears this all the time, I'm I sure. I love it. But no. I never heard it. So anyway, so they, they tell me that, and so, I love people, and I love to help people, and I especially love to write, to help other writers. I love I it. I mean, I just love it. So it's my passion. Writing's my passion. So anyway, so 
what I tell them is, well, let me show you. So I, I get a piece of paper and write out some, what to do to make it simple. So this little book right here, this little book right here, How to Successfully Create Your Very Own Dream Book, is really important because what it does is it literally tells you how to write a book, how to write a book. Now you can get writing books that they'll be this thick on how to write mm -hmm. a book. I've never had any training in writing, and like I said, my English is horrible, but anyway, but I do read a lot. But anyway, so this book just, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's, it's re very well written and, and, and not real, real serious, but it tells you how to not only write, but how to accomplish any goal that, that you have to do. Well, this gentleman gave me all these books, and I read them all. And I can tell you right now, though, one, this book is simplified, takes all the complication out of everything, and encourages you when you get to a certain step, just keep on moving. But he had one person that had said, you can hear this, I had always dreamed of writing a book, but never quite got it or got to it. Then after reading this book, extremely important little book, that this person was so inspired that they got a pencil and paper and started writing. That's what this is. It only takes a little bit of encouragement to encourage somebody. And it may not be a huge book, but if you got a story inside of you, somebody's going to benefit from that story if you can just get it out. Now, how to create your very own dream book. And you called it, today is the day. Create your very own dream book. So if you have a dream of getting published, then you just pick that piece of paper up and you start writing. Sooner or later, it's going to all fall into place. And that come from somebody who was a special education facilitator. So that's impressive right there. Now, as we were saying, you've got on the back of this book, there's this pelican. Of course, this story has a picture of another one of his characters. Attitude is everything. And this little pelican is laying in a pirou, just relaxing. Okay, so that is an important little book. Now, because time passes so fast, Dr. Phil. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we have Bird Brains Unlimited. Now, he takes a play on words and sometimes creates, well, creates a whole story. And one example was, I mean, in every sentence, the N word, I N, inconsiderate. He went all the way through instantly, but I told him, I said, I wanted him to read his story of the kids would love this. Snot. Mm -hmm. Yes, you got it right. S N O T. So, you want me to read? Being that you have that wonderful okay, yeah, voice, it, it's let's go ahead and okay. get this story in there. It's great. This, yeah, that's a great little story. Okay, it's, it's called Snot. Okay, would you pardon me a second, please? I think that I've got to sneeze, I mumbled. Please be quiet, he snapped. I can't concentrate. Your constant sneezing I really hate. Can't you see the sign that says quiet, please? It certainly pertains to your resounding sneeze. Well, I really don't know what to do. It seems I'm always going to chew. Look, I really don't want to be unkind, but I think your problems are in your mind. That's a pretty deep thought. Just what do you think? Are you suggesting I go see a shrink? I really can't say, but it's often said a lot of our problems are up in our head. That may be true. I'd be the first to agree, but I'd prefer to see an ENT, ears, ear, nose, and throat specialist, ENT, okay. Well, we met to see the doc, and Mom asked the question, can anything be done for my son's congestion? Dr. Judd exclaimed, goodness knows, I've never seen so much crud in a nose. It looks like I'll need the suction pot. This little boy is full of snot, and I know just what I'll do. Why, well, I'll prescribe a pill or two. But the big nurse screeched, like it or not, let's give that little booger a shot. I darted for the door, but the floor was slick, and that big nurse was really quick. And before I knew it, like it or not, she pinched my behind and gave me a shot. I let out a scream and a tear or two. It was the worst experience I've ever been through. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. And that's just a sample, and the other play on words is unbelievable. But these books bring out so many different uh, characters of yourself that... I can see with zip my lip. Okay. How many times do you hear the saying, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, and sometimes we should listen instead of talk? That's pretty well what this little book is about. Do you want to share anything briefly about this? Yeah, this is 
remember, I love kids. Now this, uh, this little book, just like all of them, uh, this Zip My Lips Scripture for Kids 3 to 93. And what this does is, I can think like a kid, so this book is this little boy right here, and he is interpreting scripture. He interprets scripture, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's really, it really turned, it turned out really great. Okay, so Zip the Lip, I had kind of highlighted and said that it's many lessons waiting to be discovered, okay, and that it captures and illustrates the scripture from the child's view. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's sure to leave children honoring God, their father, with their young lives. I love that. Okay. Now, here we come up with, I think we're going to get to the guitar dog. All righty. And, nope, bird brains we already covered, which was hilarious. Let's talk about guitar dog. Okay, he's definitely a mud of a different color, isn't he? Okay, so when it comes to this little book, what was the main reason for writing guitar dog? Well, I can say, I'll say this. Look, <clears throat> everything that I write just... It, it comes to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all comes to me. Now, this this guitar dog came to me in a dream. That I, that's one of the things I talk about in that how to write a book. And, and one of the most important things is is to, to have a tablet or something in, next to you where that's you right. where you sleep, because things will come to you at, at night. It's, it's it, they, they'll come to you in your dreams. So you, when something comes to you, you need to get out of bed, turn the light on, and write down what came to you, then then maybe go back to sleep. But it's very, very important. So anyways, You're right. this book, You're the right. whole thing came to You're me. You're right, right Dr. Phil, because of the fact that I started putting a tablet by my uh, dresser stand next to the bed because I'll get up the next morning and go, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's something great, and I didn't write it down, yeah. but I've been very blessed to remember, but I started writing it down. And so you're right. Now, you keep saying that you got your ideas through a dream. I had somebody approach me at the Writers Guild, and they ask if, I'm sorry, and they ask if we, if, I'm sorry, what? Okay. Okay, I see someone walking around, so I didn't know if that was me or not. You got it. Okay, three minutes. Time passed and passed. Wow. What I want to say okay, so yeah, is that the people were asking if, uh, is it really true that some people can be inspired through a dream? And I said, yes, absolutely. And that was before I met you. And then you come behind and start saying how you had automatically, you get your ideas. Yeah, me too. Especially when they're God-inspired and they're, they're ideas from God. Now other people are trying to say, well, who's their muse? I hate the word muse. I do. I don't know why, but I guess it's just me. I don't know what it means. What is muse? Something mean? that inspires you. Well, if i oh. got to have a muse, it must be God then. Oh, that's my muse. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now. Just as li I will say one, something because we just have a couple of minutes. Yeah. Can I say something? Okay. Sure. This is a wonderful lady right here. <laughs> wonderful. I mean, she is she is the real thing, and she helps so many people. And it just, I mean, I love well, her. I Everybody was, loves her. It's, it's well, wonderful. Well, I tell you what, I am so blessed, and that's why I guess God has given me favor with this television show and crew members who want to be a part of it. And I thank you very much for that. So if I am doing the right thing, and you're saying the nice things, then I'm glad to be a part of what God's going to do for you because of the fact that he knows, he has planned. And he knows that we're not ashamed to say we are children of God. Absolutely. You know, man of God, woman of God. And thank you so much for that. And I always pray, Lord, if anyone comes in contact with me, let them see you and me and not me. Because if they're looking at me, they're looking at the wrong, wrong reason. And, and favor is something that KDNA Open Channel has been for us. I mean, really, people coming in. And because you've got so many books, I said, Lord, I'm thinking you want to get together with me. We're going to have a meeting, and you're going to be an author that's just starting with a book and getting the first book out there. Took forever for us to get together, and then I find out you got all these books. You got them on ebook. You've got audio books, and I'm like, God, why is why is he need? What can I do that you haven't done already? Hmm. And you said just help you market, and I can encourage you. And and then right after that, God started opening doors and. You're already booked to do a, a seminar coming up sometime in January, which they did notify me this morning for us to make our mind up what date, mm -hmm. and they want us to get back with them, and we're really blessed and favored with the South Regional Library. And I see the rolling credits coming down. She's a, she's a whoop, that's it. <laughs> so actually, it's at, we're at the end of the show, and, but uh, you've been watching Louisiana Heartbeats, 
And my guest today was Dr. Phil D. Myers, who is a children's author, and he has books out there. If you're interested in seeing what he's got, then you can also check out his website, which is GratefulTummyBooks.com. Otherwise, if you have a story and you want to share it with the community, that's what I'm all about, is sharing your story so other people can help your dreams come true. And who knows, maybe you've got a book that you want it to come true, your dream book. Thanks for watching, and be blessed. Thank you, Sudi.